ICW.TV. We're so glad you're with us today. We have some incredible guests. We're just going to have a great time in the Lord. I know that uh, God wants to speak to you today. We're, we're just so proud that you would watch and, and turn us on today to see what God is doing in our generation today. And, and we're going to see and, and hear some things today I think are really going to bless you. So stay tuned, get ready. I'm here with my co-host, Shayla, yes. and uh, we have our guests. So Shayla, introduce. Yes, we're back with Lisa and Ashley Stringer, and we just want to say thanks again for taking time to be with us today. And um, if you've missed the last couple of segments, you definitely want to go back and watch those. We just talk about who God is in our lives, what he's doing. And, um, you know, we really feel strongly that God is is on the move in this hour. And yes. God, we've I've said this before, God's always moving, it's just sometimes we we w wake up and become aware that God's moving. But we're in a season, I think, in a, in a time period right now in our, um, not just our city and our region, but in the world where there's a shift taking place that's For happening sure. and uh, authentic desperation to truly, truly surrender yep. and really become one conduit with the Lord and the Holy yeah. Spirit. And so, yeah. you know, we just want to kind of spend this time talking about that today. Yeah. Like, what is God doing? What are we hearing? What are we, what are we feeling? Like the Holy Holy Spirit's doing in this hour. Yeah. Um, and the beautiful thing about being with believers is iron sharpens iron. There's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. But God designed us for a relationship not only with yeah. Him, with the Father, but with each other. There's, there's, um, It's strategically and, and intricately designed that way. And so I love being with my sisters in the Lord. It fires me up and my brothers. <laughs> today we have our sisters um, because... There is um, power in numbers, and there's Amen. power That's when true. we lock arms in unity yeah. and we move forth. That's and right. so sure. I'm just excited. And, and we want you to watch the last two segments that we had with the, uh, the testimony has yeah. been incredible of, of a family, what God can do, the, the heartaches they've been through with, with sickness, with, with cancer, how to fight that. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a struggle when you have to fight, and, and, and it's not always easy being a Christian, but it's powerful, and, and the testimony is incredible yeah. that comes through it. And so we just want you to listen to their heart today and, and know that, you know, just they, they look perfect, but they're not. <laughs> they, they haven't been perfect. They're blessed. They're called. Got our makeup on but, today. <laughs> But, but they've got a testimony, and, and, and I really want to know what they're seeing uh, right now and where we're going, what you see is uh, going to happen in the e future. Even within Somebody Cares, what all's going on, you know, how, how you movement, <laughs> movement forward, all right. of it. Well, we've always been about prayer. We think that prayer is vital. It's, it's communication yeah. with God. That's yeah. what prayer is. It's, it's, uh, and there is power in prayer. And uh, Doug always reminds us that the, the power comes with from whom we pray, to whom we pray, yeah. God, for whom we pray, and with whom we pray. Mm -hmm. And so in the midst of that, God is able to move. As you said, we're two yeah. or more gathered. Yeah. Um, he is there. But yeah. God is, if you have no two, and it's yes. just you, it's You're you and him. Yeah. You yeah. are two. That's, That's, right. Right. That's uh, right. And then there is you, him, and the, uh, the Holy Spirit. So let's yeah. not <laughs> negate the fact that there is. You're in. There yeah. is. Yeah. You're yeah. in. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Don't feel alone. There is just power in multitude. Yes. That's understood. Um, and so with that being said, what we are about is prayer. And we believe prophetically um, that what God has been speaking to us, both as a family, individually within yeah. our family, and that what we're sensing from other brothers and sisters yeah. in the Lord is that God is asking for us to, to, to hear his voice, to know his voice. Yeah. And too many of us have one-way communication. Yeah. I go and I have my prayer time. I've read one, one verse, maybe two or three verses, and said, that's all I got for you, God, because i got to get to work. I'm late. I work all day. Right. And so, and I tell you my petition, God, I need you to help me here, 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 here. But we never took the time to let God say what he wanted to say. And then later yeah. when it doesn't go our way, we're angry at God. Right. But God's like, I've been trying to get in a word, ed word edgewise, but you don't stop to listen. Yeah. You know, and so it's so vital right now in these days that we're living that we listen. He's got a plan. Yeah. He's got a solution. He's got a way out for whatever for sure. it is we're going through yeah. individually or corporately. But it's going to take relationship yeah. and being still before the Lord. 
I think that one of the things that we're seeing and sensing is that God is, is really wanting to touch this younger generation and use this generation. Yeah. Yes. Key being this younger generation that you represent, Ashley, and that I'm going to even look at you, that you represent, <laughs> you being yep. younger than Larry and I, is that you Much all must younger. remain tethered to the Larrys yeah, and I. Yeah, for sure. And I think a key to the success is going to be may God use your strength mm -hmm and your insight and the wisdom he's given you all to maneuver through the the, the battlefield because yeah. it's a battlefield out yeah. there but you must use also the wisdom of the gray-haired man yeah. does that make sense yeah. and i think that um if we partner together as you said in the opening we're going to be okay yeah. no yeah. matter oh, what yeah. comes our way we're right. going to be okay it's a matter of how much we're going to be able to enjoy the moments that he's giving us and yeah. be not fearful right. of what yeah. we see. If we have everything I wanted to say. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> you talk it's okay. We need the confirmation a word again. Yeah. It's all yeah. good. Absolutely. Yeah. So, anyway, wow. but yeah, no, I was just going to say, like it says in Revelations, is just how when the end times come, it's going to just be disasters. And obviously we can see just how crazy our world is right now and how there's going to be false prophets. But just to remember, like Mom's been saying, is just if we listen to God and we open our ears just to listen to Him, then we won't be blinded by what the world says and just that peer pressure and everything that's going on around us, all this noise will only, you know, putting on like God's spiritual headphones, like as you could say, is yeah. only listening to like His voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also just... Um, like we were saying about just also for any like young people are watching or like millennials and younger of just honoring the former generation just because you have so much wisdom that we need. And I know that God's blessed us in our own way. and We yeah. can do things, some things that you can't do and you can't do some things we can't do. But I know that when we just, we honor you, um, that God can bless us yeah. and we can move um, quickly and we can move more powerfully uh, when we honor um, and we respect. Um, another thing is just, I've That's noticed that even in the church, um, like you said about relationships, I think it's so important. Um, that's just something to say specifically in the church since I'm homeschooled and that more of my time is spent in the church right. is that we just need our, our leaders to love on our children, um, especially in our youth groups and um, in our kids' ministries, is for our leaders just to love on us, um, to really ask us how our day is going, just to talk to us, love us, um, guide us in truth, um, even if it hurts, yeah. uh, just because we need it. <laughs> um, also, just with these end times coming, we need each other um, because we're going to fight these battles together. So I think it's so important that these pastors um, don't just preach a good word, something that's encouraging or, or about grace, but they, they take the time to meet with us and um, really guide us through life because, man, some of these teenagers are going through some hardships. Yeah. Um, and it's only going to get harder. Yeah. Okay, with the world of how it, just, it is right now. And so we just need our, our leaders to be leaders. Yeah. It's just, I, it's so vital. I could tell you, yeah. youth yeah. group is crazy. You think it's a, sometimes yeah. a safe place, but it can be hard. Right. Well, I'm so excited about you. <laughs> I, I came out of the charismatic kind of movement in the 70s, <laughs> so I know it was, it was young people. It was, yes. it was started with a bunch of radical hippies yeah. that, that got a hold of Jesus, and Jesus got in and, 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 and took yeah. over. And, <laughs> And, and the next thing, there was a movement that, yes. that took over. And so that's what I'm excited about your generation. Yeah. I feel like we're entering that time. And, and people talk about how bad it was, but they hadn't lived long enough to remember it was bad back then, too. That's and right. And a matter of fact, if you look at that generation, that's when all the drugs, heroin and LSD, yep. and yep. there were riots between blacks and whites. And, I mean, it was chaos in America shootings at Kent State, Vietnam War, I mean, it was just it was a, a mess. constant mess. Yeah. And then the Holy Ghost hit Bam. and everything changed. Yeah. And, and it started with your generation, wow. young people yeah. that, that weren't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus and, and, and started doing something. So that's where I feel like we're really entering a For time sure. that God's going to do something Absolutely. again. Absolutely. You know? I think the shaking is drawing the Lord in. Oh, yeah. And with that being said, you know, I don't forget, not because he was at your church the day before the Lord called him home, but I will never forget to honor men like Dr. Buddy Hicks yeah. mm -hmm. and others that have sacrificed so much. Although, uh, Doug reminds me often, it is not a sacrifice to serve the Lord. Right. By no means, it is not yeah. a sacrifice. It's a privilege to yeah. serve the Lord. Yeah. It's a privilege yeah. to be called yeah. because when we want him, he's right there. Yeah. But, we, we, so but And the other thing I wanted to say is about the end times. Granted, 
for every generation, it feels like the end times, times. because yeah. because it is the worst that it's ever been. Yeah. The only negative is that it keeps getting worse, worse and worse and worse. We don't know when the Lord is going to come back, but what we do know is that we're to preach the gospel, right. to love thy neighbor like thyself, yeah. uh, and to put on the full armor of God so that we're ready for all things. Yeah. Yeah. And not and to be fearful. That's right. It's right. not something that's to be what scared I, I think of. Too. There's that constant reminder that we, our peace, our joy, our faith is not up for negotiation. Yeah. I travel quite a bit, and Ashley does too. In fact, she's been to, I think we've counted 22 nations. That How many? I'll so, say I, something like 22, 24, oh, yes. somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. <laughs> um, and so I say that because there's times that we're not on the same flight. And I've told Ashley numerous times, honey, if God calls me home, by all means, you're, it may hurt. You're going to cry for a moment. You have made your days, but get over it. Then you get it together, run, get running. over it, and you finish the race and don't get mad at God. We will see each other again because I'm saved. And yeah. so long as you keep calling on the name of Jesus, yeah. I know that I know where yeah. I'm going. And so I think we need to not be scared to right. if something happens to us. Yeah. Yeah. It may be painful for a moment if you have a, a horrific, tragic death. death right. And I'm not by no means, I can't even comprehend the people <laughs> that have been prisoners of war yeah. for a long time. I mean, I couldn't fathom. God, I, I just call me home, those people right. that have endured so much. But at the end of the day, I cannot fear death. Right. I will not. Right. And I think over here in, in you know in Western world, Western <laughs> you know civilization, we 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 some we're just used to things coming so easy that we don't realize the people that are doing that, yes. embracing that, the yes. privilege of living that, living it out, um, wouldn't have it any other way. You people know? right now in India and Pakistan, in the Middle East, oh, that just yeah, to, sure. just to, to, just to read a Bible is a crime. Yeah. We must not take it for granted, yeah. you know, for those of us that have it easier. Yeah. Yeah. But but I say don't fear death in general, just don't fear, don't fear death because to be absent of the body is Absolutely. to be in the presence yes. of God. Yeah. And Amazing. I say it in that sense yeah. that, do I want to go? No. Am I going to stop living? No. I'm going to live until I right. die. Uh, and, and But until then, I want her to know, don't be mad at God. And yeah. it's so important that we don't cause our children to stumble because we haven't taught them well. Yeah, well, we are seeing, um, you know, with, with this move of God and with the power of God in this generation that is authentically um, desperate for God, we have seen the waves have come through, and there was there has been such a strong wave of subconsciously blaming God for things like that. You know, well, God, if you love so and so, well, why did you take them or right. whatever? And so, yeah. I feel like there was this long chapter of that of of subconsciously blaming God instead of realizing we live in a world with a real devil. You know, and um, I think I just feel like we're coming back to that place of knowing. Yeah. Really trusting the true heart and character of a loving God. <laughs> I, I and just all in because absolutely. of Absolutely. Yeah. I was on a flight a few days ago. I was telling Larry I had gone to the Send and was a part of the beautiful prayer movement and gathering that took place there in Orlando. On the way back, my flight from Washington, D.C., because that was my connection <laughs> oh, to my Houston. Word. It was one of the worst turbulent experience, turbulence experiences I've ever had, and I've flown quite a bit. <laughs> um, literally, thought, you know, you fall, the, you feel the plane yeah. fall, you hear the rattling. And for a moment there, I thought, oh my gosh, this plane is going to disintegrate. Is something going to happen? Then I remembered, no, you've got prophetic promises yes. that haven't been left out. And it wasn't a fear of dying, yeah. <laughs> but it was just the reality of like, yeah, no, no, nothing's Darn. going to happen. Yeah, you know? yeah. Whereas some people back there are really shaking because they have no clue of promises because right. they don't know God. You know, and so it, it's, you have to find yeah. laughter. You guys said y'all yeah. love to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. You have to find humor <laughs> in the midst of it all. And I can't imagine going through life without Jesus. Jesus. I mean, because yes. even with Jesus, you're like reminding him of the pro prophetic, you know. Yeah. The, and the other thing when you mentioned is when we were going through my husband's challenge of stage four cancer, yeah. he was only given weeks to live. Yeah, I think you know, people I don't did. realize that often with that mm -hmm. situation if we chose, If we chose not to treat. Meaning right. it would have been, you know, a, a, a spiral downhill quickly. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, I remember there were days, Shayla, where I cried. Yeah. You know, I cried and I, I just said, God, I'm tired. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get, you know, this. But I wasn't mad at God. Yeah. And it was in that time of crying and intercession, which are really, Doug always reminds me, and I don't remember who taught him, but he said intercession was, I mean, tears are only intercession into the Lord when they're, yeah. when they're, you're crying out to him. Mm -hmm. And I would cry and, and, and ask God a few things. And it was in the midst of that, that God would remind me, I've got this. 
and I would say, God, but what about the promises that have been, you know, yet to be fulfilled? And, and he would speak very clearly things, and he brought that peace that surpasses understanding. Yeah. And so after four or five tissues or a bag of clean, you know, <laughs> of worn tissue, I was able to get up strong again and go before my family because that was in my private time yeah. of trying to hear his voice. When you said that, it reminded me, though, I, I just struck me how much God loves us because he said he keeps our tears. He has. Yes. He's watching. He knows our heart. It breaks his heart. Yes. He, and he yes. saved them. He's, he knows everything we've gone through. Yes. And he's going to bless us to where we can't even comprehend it right now. Right. What's to come. You know, the future. And this is so short. I think Francis Chan did a thing where he showed a rope. And that was eternity. And had a little piece at the end that was red. And he said, that's our life. Yeah, what are we nothing. worried about? This that that's that's our, our real life is that's forever, right. and we're struggling about what am I going to do tomorrow? I'm like, right? No, wow, it, it's, it's so tiny that little bit that we're living right now. Why worry? I just recently moved. We recently yeah. moved uh, to be closer to the airport, and in the process of the moving, uh, Larry, I had to move from one home to another, and I think we got rid of over half of our things. Yeah. And I think that once I brought half the things over, I probably got rid of Come another on. half of those yeah. things. And I realized that in the day and age, and everybody's style's different. Yeah. I'm just very, yeah, you know, I, I'm meticulous about things <laughs> like a certain order. Um, but I, I think the biggest thing that, I, the reason I mention is, is the biggest effect that this had on me was coming to understand that my priority was no longer materialistic things. Not the brand of purse I had, not the ice on my hands or the yeah. gold beads or or, or, or how many, it. just, just, it didn't matter. Now, I'm not saying don't go get fine things and don't enjoy what God's allowing you to have. They're great. <laughs> Absolutely. Just for me, yeah. I'm living in a day where I realize the most important thing is can I share Jesus with you? Can I love you? And it doesn't mean going yes. to be uh, biblical and yeah. throwing a Bible Toe -to -toe. in your face. It means can I just sit and have a cup of coffee with you? Can I love you in truth? Yeah. Can I be I your friend? It. Can And so that means more to me than anything. And so do I want a very basic clean home with the basic needs and amenities? Yes. Who does it? But but it doesn't make or break me. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think That's it happens tough. more to people, Larry's in my age, at some point where you come to the revelation of it's only material. It's tough. Yeah. And yes. it doesn't matter. What yeah. matters are souls. Yeah. What matters is joy within the four walls. Yeah. If I'm being a hypocrite at home, what good does the fancy the house mean? Yeah. Yeah. So... And the only so thing good. I'm going to have to show in eternity is those people that I brought to the Lord. Yes. Yeah. I got yeah. nothing else. That's I can't right. go to God and say, look at the car I got. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> One of the things we experience a lot with Daddy uh, is when we go to restaurants, you can tell him what Dad always does at tables and with her, or the people that are serving us and the prayers. <laughs> when he asks me, yes. right? Okay, I mean, it's, it happens quite a bit um, where he'll just, you know, ask the waitress um, or um, – the waiter of just is there something I can pray for you? Is there a way I can just bless you? Or you know, how's your day going? Even that can minister to somebody. Yeah. For sure. You know, when they're having a long day and just ask them how they're doing, or you yeah. know, you look great today, or something encouraging, or I like your name. Um, so we, I mean, it's it's always ministered to me when you just see that most people are very open. Yeah. To just receiving a prayer. We used to say in Mary Kay that well, we still say they still say this in Mary Kay, but you know, Mary Kay Ash would always teach the woman that people have an invisible sign. Uh, you know, hanging on their neck that says, make yes. me feel important, you know, yes. and our life goal is to, you know, to know him and to know people and make them feel known yeah. and then to introduce them to the Father, right. you know, and yeah, as you were talking about um, Doug and just, you know, having those moments of, of intercession with the Lord and I just was having this picture of David, just David always maintained a soft heart no matter yeah. what was coming against him, you know, and God was yes. able to really use David and I think that um, just the posture of our heart is imperative. Uh, something about my husband that um, it reminds me of, of David. Yeah. Um, he's a human like anybody else. He has imperfections like anybody else. Is he a man of God? Yes. Is he faithful to the Lord? Absolutely. Um, but he's a regular person yeah. like everybody else. And so, uh, and the wives know that. And so do the children. <laughs> and so do the friends. But Doug is an open book. Yeah, and so sure. um, with Doug, he would often tell people, people would use him. No, people use him, not what. Yeah. People will use Doug at times because the tendency of humanity is sometimes to use each other. And sometimes we don't always have the best intent yeah. and the grateful heart. Yeah. And so he gets used sometimes. And I would find myself taking offense. 
And he said, Lisa, why, you cannot take offense. I said, but Doug, these people are using you and you're giving, we don't even have anything and you're giving away what we don't even have. Yeah. And he said, Lisa, if I'm being used and I know that I'm being used, am I really being used? He said, I'm not being used. Wow. I'm giving, these people think they're using me, but I'm giving it away. I'm blessing them. And that has ministered so much to me. And he said, if you carry woundedness, you're only hurting us. You're not just hurting you, you're hurting us yep. as a family and you're stopping the blocking of blessing. When I just gave away the last 15 pennies we own, there will be yeah. no blessing return because you're ungrateful. You must give with a grateful heart. That may seem silly to some people, but I think there's <laughs> others that will understand. And there's other spouses of ministers that might be understand. listening that understand, yeah, or family sure. members, or, or wounded prodigal children that would understand. But my dad helped everybody else, but he didn't help me. You know, forgive because you don't know. Maybe your father was trying to reach you and he couldn't. Maybe your father had a blind spot and didn't see it, uh, or your mother, whomever it is. But we must really learn to release things out of our spirit. Yeah. Um, trust God. Know that God is our vindicator, our healer, our banner, our peace, our everything. And may it minister to you that if you're being used and you know you're being used and you still give it away, <laughs> there is blessing in it. So yes. you're really not being That's used. That's a good <laughs> well, I, I, I think there's a lot of wives <laughs> of ministers that probably can relate yeah, my wife really. wants to protect me constantly yes. yeah. and when she sees what you're seeing she goes wait a minute they're you know and she's seen it from a different view yes. than I am and I'm like no I'm you know yeah uh, I'm called to bless these people and no they're taking advantage of you it's kingdom you. at the end yes. of the day did it really belong to me or was it God who gave me the download yep. so if God mm -hmm. gave me the download it really wasn't mine anyway yeah. You know, that's yeah. just where it's We've at. We've only got about a minute left before we're going to do something awesome. Yes. Ashley is, is a songwriter and, and ministers in music, and we just want to share that with you, our audience today. And so we're going to have a, a video as, in just a minute, and you're going to bless us, and I appreciate you. I'm so thankful that you came and have been a part of our, our ministry today. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I think we have like 20 seconds. Do you want to leave a word of encouragement, Ashley, to anybody For watching? Sure. Um, this song called Yours just talks about belonging to the Lord. Um, I know sometimes we can feel peer pressure to be in a relationship, but God is really king. And if we just give ourselves to him, he will bring that perfect person in his perfect time. So just remember that God is king. Um, he has a plan for your life and his timing is perfect. So just yes. trust him. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we're so excited. We're st if you want to get information about our music and also at the end of our show, you'll be able to see that. And so we love you. God bless you. Listen to this and enjoy. Yes.
forever. I'm gonna be yours forever. I'm gonna be yours. You're gonna be mine forever.